Good morning! BBT si Filipino at magandang umaga din sa inyong lahat na nanonood sa Pilipinas. Nakakapanibago, di po ba? Dahil last Sunday, nakita ninyo na buo pa yung banda na tumutugtog with the praise and worship. But, tandaan po natin, wherever you are right now, remember that the God who made the world and all things in it, since He is the Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands. So we will praise and worship the Lord our God in our homes, in spirit, and in truth. Bago tayo magumpisa sa ating uh, praise and worship, let us prepare our heart to worship the Lord our God, and we pray. Our Father who are in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as in heaven. Panginoon, buksan mo po ang aming mga puso. Pumasok ka, O Diyos, sa aming mga puso at gawin mong dalisay upang ang aming pagpupuri ay maging katanggap-tanggap sa inyong harapan. Humihingi po kami ng kapatawaran sa aming mga kasalanan at lubos ang aming pagsusumamo na kami ay iyong ibalik muli sa inyong silong ng presensya. Salamat, Panginoong Jesus, sa inyong kabutihan at grasyang nanggaling sa krus ng inyong kalbaryo. Dahil nang ikaw ay mabuhay muli, kami ay nabigyan ng tagumpay na mabigyang buhay ng walang hanggan. At dahil dito ay marapat dapat lamang na ikaw ay aming papurihan. Sa pangalan ni Jesus, Amen. Espesyal ang araw na ito because today we are celebrating Resurrection Sunday. And this is the greatest day in history that death has beaten and God has rescued us. Sabi sa Luke 24.6.7, He's not here. He has risen. Remember how He told you while He was still with you in Galilee, the Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners. Be crucified. And on the third day, be raised again. Buhay ang Panginoong Jesus! Buhay ang ating pananampalataya sa Kanya. Kaya tayo ay buhay na buhay na magpupuri sa Kanya. Greatest day in history That has beaten you had rescued me Sing it out, Jesus is alive The empty cross, the empty grave Life eternal, you have won that day Shout it out, Jesus is alive He's alive And oh, happy day, happy day You wash my sin away Oh, happy day, happy day I'll never be the same Forever I am changed When I stand in that place Free at last, meeting face to face I am yours, he says you are mine The endless joy, the perfect peace Final vein, finally world peace Celebrate, Jesus is alive And He's alive And oh, happy day, happy day You wash my seed away Oh, happy day, happy day I'll never be the same Forever I am changed And oh, what a glorious day What a glorious way That you have saved me And oh, what a glorious day 
what a glorious name and oh what a glorious day what a glorious way that you have saved me and oh what a glorious day what a glorious day yeah. and oh happy day happy day you wash my seed away oh happy day happy day I'll never be the same Forever I am changed And I'll never be the same Indeed Lord we will never be the same Yes, indeed, we will never be the same. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In, he, in His great mercy, He has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. For if we have been united with Him in a death like His, we will certainly also be united with Him in resurrection like His. You said, Lord, that you are the resurrection and the life. We are blessed that we believe in you because we have the eternal life from you. Though even our body will die, we will have the living hope in you. How great the chasm that laid between us how high the mountains I could not climb in desperation I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the light then through the darkness your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Yes, Lord. You are my living hope Who could imagine So great a mercy What heart could fathom Such boundless grace The God of ages Stepped down from glory To wear my sin and bear my shame the cross has spoken i am forgiven the king of kings calls me his own beautiful savior i'm yours forever jesus christ my living hope and hallelujah praise the one who set me free hallelujah a death has lost its grips on me you have broken every chain there's salvation in your name jesus christ my living Oh, and hallelujah, praise the one who set me free, hallelujah, and death has lost its grips on me, you have broken every chain, there's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, 
my living home. Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your buried body began to breathe out of the silence. The roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me. Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your buried body began to breathe And out of the silence The roaring lion Declared the grave has no claim on me And Jesus yours is the victory Hallelujah, I praise the one who set me free Hallelujah, death has lost its grips on me You have broken every chain There's salvation in your name Jesus Christ, my living hope And hallelujah I praise the one who set me free And hallelujah And death has lost its griefs on me You have broken every chain There's salvation in your name Jesus Christ, my living hope Jesus Christ, my living hope The observance of the Lord's Supper is a major distinction of Bethesda Bedok Campines Brethren Church. If you have your bread and wine or even juice as replacement, I would like to invite you now to participate in the breaking of bread, a command that Christ asked us to do before he went to the cross. While they were eating, the Bible says, Jesus took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, eat it, this is my body. We do this in remembrance of the body of Christ. And then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Shall we pray? Thank you, Father, for sending Jesus to die on the cross for us. And we thank you for this reminder today that our faith will be useless without the blood and the bread the body of Christ, to give us hope, a future, and security here and now. In Jesus' name, amen. Giving allows us to bless the Lord and his ministry. And the Bible tells us, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. The Bible also tells us to give cheerfully, to let grace abound in us, so that having all sufficiency in all things at all times, we may abound in every good work. So we may not be able to physically give in a physical setting, but technology has enabled us to give online or by check. 
I'd like to ask you to write down what is on the slide or do a screenshot of it and generously give unto the Lord's work. Shall we pray? Thank you, Father, that our giving is a reminder that you are our great provider. We offer our lives, we offer our resources for the expansion of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Blessed day! Welcome to our BBTC Filipino service, friends, relatives, colleagues. I just want to thank you for joining us today. And we want to thank you even for the way that we are able to come up with our second online service, although a lot trimmer, but thanking God for our multimedia team that has been working so hard to bring God's word to you. We're going to worship God together. We're going to listen to the word of God together. So if you're on your own by yourself, just thank God for this day. And if you're with family and relatives, turn to each other and say, blessed resurrection day. Amen. You know, on the screen, you will see these three pictures. There's such a thing as mega voice, mega star, very rich mega people, mega box, you make a lot of money, even mega bite, mega contracts, and even a mega church. This particular picture shows a huge church that can accommodate thousands of people. Now, Marina Bay Sands also has what you call mega casinos, and a lot of Singaporeans pay so much money to join the mega casinos. You see, the word mega is a description of something extremely epic, extremely big. And we have grown to believe that bigger is better. But the problem with the word mega is it's relative. There will always be a younger megastar who will rise up one day, and there will always be a bigger building, a bigger contract, and something mega will only be as good as the next mega. But there is a mega event in history that cannot be replaced by any other mega event in all of history because this is a continuing event that will culminate when history ends. And this is the mega of all mega events as far as I'm concerned. And it started more than 2,000 years ago. On Good Friday, we learned that Jesus Christ died on the cross for a singular purpose, and that is to die for our sins. He would be buried. He would be crucified for the sins of this pervasive world. He was crucified, he was buried on the third day. And Luke 24 actually said that some women went to the tomb of Jesus to find the tomb very empty. They did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. They were quite startled, but then two men in glimmering clothes appeared to them and asked them this question. Why do you look for the living among the dead? He's not here. He is risen. The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. So what they did was they rushed to tell the 11 apostles then, but they did not believe him. But Peter, what he did was he ran to the tomb and he found the strips of linen empty. Then there were two very depressed disciples who were walking on the road to Emmaus because their master has died. Jesus appeared to them, and when they recognized him, they headed back to Jerusalem and reported this thing again to the disciples, that Jesus is risen indeed. And while the two disciples were talking, Jesus appeared to the apostles. Whoa, they were startled, they were frightened, They thought they saw a ghost. You see, ghosts don't eat. But Jesus Christ asked them for food. Jesus asked them to look at his hands and feet and to touch him because a ghost does not have flesh and bones. And then he reminded them, this is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything written about me in the Old Testament must be fulfilled. 
And this is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead. I'm going to send you what my father has promised you. Stay here, but stay in the city until you have clothed with power from on high. Then after 40 days of appearing before many followers, Jesus ascended into heaven in the presence of many, many witnesses. Before he ascended physically to heaven, he gave, he gave the great commission in Matthew 28, verses 19 to 20, that says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and lo, I am with you always to the very ends of the age. He went up to heaven bodily, and in Acts 2, while about 120 disciples were fasting and praying, the Holy Spirit descended upon them. Thereafter, there was a revolution in their hearts. And then Jesus, and then, uh, I'm sorry, Peter preached a very short sermon which yielded 3,000 new baby Christians. This was the birth of the Christian church. The spread of Christianity with the power of the Holy Spirit became unstoppable. And the once mousy and scared disciples of Christ were bold, were fearless in declaring the gospel. Paul was a key person in the birth of the early church. At that time, they actually thought the gospel or the good news that Jesus Christ died for us, that he died for our sins, they thought that the good news was just for the Jews. But when the non-Jews began to respond to the good news, the apostles realized that Jesus' good news transcended the dividing line of culture, race, age, and color. And Paul, he was to share the gospel to the non-Jews like you and me. We are called the Gentiles. Now, he preached to many Gentiles, and one of the places he preached was Corinth, which is a Roman colony. It was like Singapore, full of permanent residents and people of different nationalities, an intellectual cosmopolitan hub, and very, very prosperous in the Greek world. And he was one of those who founded the Corinthian church. Now, being a new church, it wrestled with several issues. And one of the issues Paul had to address was that the resurrection of the body is not true, and very offensive, in fact. And people believe that once you die, you die, you're dead, that's it. But in 1 Corinthians 15, and, I'll, and I'm reading from the New Living Translation, Paul says, and let's all read this together. It's a bit longer, but I abridged it. Let me now remind you of the good news I preached to you before. You welcomed it then, and you still stand firm in it. I passed on to you what was most important. Christ died for our sins, just as the scripture said. He was buried and he was raised from the dead on the third day, just as the scripture said. He was seen by Peter and then by the twelve. After that, he was seen by more than 500 of his followers at one time, and most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he was seen by James and later by all the apostles. And Paul said, I also saw him. Since we preach that Christ rose from the dead, why are some of you saying there will be no resurrection of the dead? For there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, then all our preaching is useless and your faith is useless. And we apostles would all be lying about God, for we have said that God raised Christ from the grave. For if the dead are not raised, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, 
and you are still in your sins. Then he went on and he said, Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in Christ we have hope in this life only, oh, we are all people most to be pitied. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. For God has put all things in subjection under his feet. And this is my first point after reading this. I'd like to invite you to read the entire 1 Corinthians 15. But I just want to focus on this mega event. But if you have time, go and meditate on it. There are a lot of things there that says about uh, the end, about the first Adam and the second Adam. I just want to bring up with you three points today. The first point is Jesus' resurrection is history's mega event. The truth is a great event preceded Jesus. After being carried off to exile by conquering nations, the Jews were scattered all over the Roman Empire by the Roman conquerors. So by the time Jesus Christ came, people believed that he was a deliverer, the Messiah, the one who will save them from the Romans. And so their hope was really high. But this hope was actually dashed when Jesus Christ died. And when that happened, they scampered like rats, afraid of being caught by the authorities. They were lost, they were hopeless, they were discouraged, and everyone expected Jesus to be dead. You see, the women who went to bring spices, they expected Jesus to be dead. The two disciples who were depressed expected Jesus to be dead. The apostles did not believe any of their stories until Jesus Christ appeared to them on the flesh, Flesh that could penetrate walls and flesh that could eat. So when Peter went to the tomb, he actually found the tomb empty. And he found the linen just as if something just evaporated. They were still there. You see, there were many witnesses. And a revolution of the heart began. People started to preach about the good news that Jesus died for our sins. He was resurrected and those who believe in him will someday resurrect forever and ever. And there is hope in Jesus Christ. You and I, BBTC Filipino, have the same resurrected body eternally. Let me show to you the verse. And this is a secret that Paul said. Let me reveal to you a wonderful secret. Who? We will not all die, but we will all be transformed. It will happen in a moment, in the blink of an eye, when the last trumpet is blown. For when the trumpet sounds, those who have died will be raised to live forever, and we who are living will also be transformed. Hallelujah. For our dying bodies must be transformed into bodies that will never die. Our mortal bodies must be transformed into immortal bodies. You see, there were many witnesses. Jesus appeared to Paul. And Jesus' resurrection actually created such a stir that even up to now, we still recognize that B.C. is before Christ and A.D. is after the death of Christ. This is how we normally look at history, the timeline of history. Before the resurrection, the apostles were a bunch of scared people huddled together because they were so afraid of being arrested. But after the resurrection and Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, the flame of the Holy Spirit fanned the lives of the apostles. Except for John, all of them died a martyr's death, bold, fearlessly proclaiming the resurrected Christ. And you know, Paul was a persecutor of Christians. He was there when the kind and gentle Stephen was stoned to death for believing in Jesus Christ. On his way to Damascus, he met Christ. He was going to persecute the Christians, but he met Christ. 
and the persecutor became the persecuted. And he found many churches in the New Testament. What happened? Paul considers this very question in 1 Corinthians 15, 12 to 19. What if Jesus is not risen from the grave? What if there is no resurrection? His answer, whatever I tell to you now is empty. Whatever Billy Graham has said to you is empty. Whatever anybody in church has told you about Jesus Christ is empty because we have a pointless faith. And we are false witnesses because Christianity is anchored upon the fact that the resurrection happened. And those who believe in the resurrection are also resurrected with Christ. That's why we have baptism. That's why we said... The life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loves me and gave himself for me. We would be very deceived and we would still be in sin because Jesus Christ came on the earth to die for our sins. He had to die and he had to live, but we'll still be in our sins if there is no resurrection. And this is it. The dead in Christ are still dead. And not only that, we will be very pitiful people because we are preaching a gospel that is not true. Without the resurrection, there is no faith. Everything that Paul and the apostles preach and all the Sunday sermons, Sunday sermons are meaningless. But you see, the resurrection is real, not just on, as far as the Bible is concerned. The resurrection is real because we see it in people's lives, transformed lives, beginning from the apostles and a few other people with all, all throughout history. And this is my second point. We are part of the mega event. The resurrection is history's mega event, and we are a part of it. I accepted Lord Jesus in my life 41 years ago. It tells you how old I am. From an insecure law student looking for approval in men, Jesus gradually transformed my life into one whose security is grounded on his resurrection presence in me. And I became part of this continuing mega event. The resurrection of Christ is proof that we serve a living, character-changing, life-transforming, revolutionary God. In this world that is full of uncertainties, disease, like COVID, or even death. Now here are trans some transforming lives. You see that guy there? He was a poor womanizer who experienced the perks of wealth, but God catapults him into the Philippine Senate and Manny Pacquiao, a world boxing champion, is in the forefront of his life declaring the Lord, helping the poor, doing good things for the poor. You see Billy Graham, a young farmer, making a huge difference in the world by sharing the gospel when hundreds and thousands of people came to know the Lord. Among us BBTC Filipino, I can easily mention Rovi, one of our cell group leaders who experienced the freedom of forgiving her abuser. Then you have Ming in the kitchen ministry. She had it all figured out until a deep crisis brought her to Jesus. She and her family now attend our church, praise God. And our worship leader, Blas, Kuya Blas. The intelligent, tough guy from Ilocos who is now our worship director. You see, instead of exalting ourselves, we are told, be humble. Instead of hating our enemies, we are told, love them. Instead of fearing death, because death has no hold over us, we are, thought, we are taught that we are securities in Christ. These are life-changing ideas and life-changing lives. The resurrection promises us that we will live forever. In Revelation 21, verses 1 to 6, actually, it says, we are told that the dwelling of God will be with us someday, and where there will be no more death, nor mourning, 
for the old order of things will pass away. We come today to celebrate the ever new and always exciting reality that Jesus is alive. We live because Christ lives. This is the living hope we have amidst the present pandemic crisis in this very fleeting world. 1 Corinthians 15 verses 32 to 37 says, and let's read this together. For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable and we shall be changed. For this perishable body must put on the imperishable and this mortal body must put on immortality. When the perishable puts on the imperishable and the mortal puts on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that says, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So because the resurrection is history's mega event, and not only are we a part of it, Paul encourages us to press on in Christ. 1 Corinthians 15, 58 says, Therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast, immovable, always abound in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. Paul is saying, press on. Be strong. Be immovable. Work enthusiastically for the Lord. This scary world is not it. There is much more to this world in this life. You see, the current pandemic dominates everything in our lives. Today, be it in the social media or news, borders are closed, the healthcare systems are stretched, social distancing, protective masks are implemented, and the unemployment level is so high, so the level of stress is also high because businesses have the have gone down. And daily, this unseen C-19 is causing fear and anxiety as infections and death mount. As residents of Singapore, we are united with the government and our church in staying home so we can help stem the spread. This virus is showing the world how fragile our world is. It has sent the world market on a free fall and the economies of the world on its knees. Our healthcare systems, our political, medical, church, and even family leadership are being tested. We don't know how long this will last. Some say a year or even more. Reverend Edmund Chan of one of the biggest churches here in Singapore says, let us not miss on the reality that this pandemic is not the last of our global crisis. This is part of what they call an eschatological birth pains. In other words, this is just the contraction before the birth of a child, meaning this is just the beginning of the end times as revealed by Jesus in Matthew 24, Luke 21, and Mark 3. So while C-19 is causing stress in the world, BBTC Filipino and you who are attending our service now, I'd like to just tell, share my belief that this could be a defining hour for all of us. It is not business as usual, Po. Three weeks ago, we were meeting in the chapel enjoying anointed worship, listening to anointed preaching, eating the food from our anointed kitchen ministry, learning from our anointed teachers, partaking of the bread and wine together, practicing for today's resurrection 
Sunday. Today, you are worshiping with us where you are, without the physical structure of BBTC. All of a sudden, the great strength of the church, which is the physical community of believers, is not with, is not with us today. We have not met in the physical structure of BBTC for the last three weeks, but for the last two weeks, we have intensified our online prayer, cell group meetings, trainings among our people. We had our first online service, and we have reached a thousand people. Moreover that, I am encouraged to know that many of our CGs are meeting for prayer every day online. It is challenging us how we do our discipleship when we cannot meet physically to worship the Lord. COVID has shown what really matters most in life. It is our relationship with the resurrected creator God. Three Sundays ago, I encouraged you to pray, not to worry, to count your blessings, to claim God's promises of protection, to consider your responsibility, and to continue the work of Christ. As we press on being strong and immovable, I'd like to encourage you to do the following. Let's have a pandemic of prayer. This is a defining hour for us, for us Christians. This is a time to pray and repent of our sins of pride, of dishonoring the Lord, of ignoring the Lord, of taking him for granted in 2 Chronicles 7.14. Pray for the Singapore government and the leaders. Pray that the Philippine local officials will have wisdom and good management to distribute the Goods that are meant for the poor, for those who need it. Pray for your employers and your neighbors. Pray for opportunities to share the gospel. Be like Fanny, the example of Fanny. She just said something like, she sent me a message uh, yesterday and said, you know, we have been sharing to these people, to these neighbors of mine, and finally one of them accepted the Lord. Pray that you will be intentional in sharing the gospel to your families here in the Philippines, like Kuyamads. He shared the gospel to his sister in the United States. She accepted the Lord online. And now he's doing discipleship on her. Pray that as the world is saturated with the knowledge of C19, the world will be saturated with the glory of the Lord. Let's not waste C19. Pandemic of prayer. Let's have a pandemic of discipleship. BBTC leaders, BBTC Filipino leaders, step up your prayers for your members more. Step up your online discipleship. Focus on the ministry of the word. Now is the time to encourage your members to build the spiritual discipline of reading the Bible daily and meditating on the word because they have more time. Members, if your employers are fearful, pray for them. Be sensitively bold in sharing what matters most in life is the resurrected Christ. Deepen our walk with the Lord. You cannot do this without getting to know your God through the Bible. Build a pandemic of prayer. Let's have a pandemic of discipleship. And finally, let's have a pandemic of outreach. Press on, be strong, immovable in sharing Christ because we have the resurrected Lord in us. Share the gospel anywhere, everywhere. Now is the time that people need to know their living hope in the midst of of fear and anxiety. Our job is to share. God's job is to save. So let's share. Let's be bold. Let's be intentional. One of our sisters just SMS me today and she says, praise the Lord because I shared the gospel to somebody online, another gospel to somebody online. That person rededicated himself and the other accepted the Lord. Let's be creative. Let's be creative. God must be honored at this time. I don't want to die, but eventually we will all go in that direction. I see the biggest problem is not dying from a virus or a sickness or an accident. I think the biggest problem is dying without hope, dying in fear, dying without Jesus, and dying with the, without the assurance that one day we will meet God face to face. 
We fear an invisible virus. But let me ask you something. Should we not fear an invisible God? Made visible in Jesus? Who gives us a living hope? Who gives us protection? Who provides for us? And who gives us security now and forevermore? Let me leave this with you. Nothing you do for the Lord is ever useless. And as I mentioned earlier, let's press on. Let's build a pandemic of prayer. Pray daily. A lot of my friends, a lot of the people in BBTC Filipino, a lot of the people in BBTC are praying, praying. And even on Friday, we will be praying from 10 o'clock to 10 p.m. in the Love Singapore Day of Prayer. Join us. There will be a pandemic of discipleship and then a pandemic of outreach. And I want to leave with this. Because the resurrection of Jesus is history's mega event, and you and I are a part of it, let's be immovable, let's be strong, serving God, let's press on in Christ. Amen. Have faith. Be prudent. Do the right thing. Address your concerns over safety. Wear your mask. Do the dis social distancing. Wash hands. I do that a lot. But overcome the fear with the assurance that you and I have the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. You see, this has always been the Lord's battle. And all we need to do is join in this mega event. Be a part of the continuing resurrection history that began when Jesus rose from the dead. My prayer is that we understand what really means in life is our relationship with Christ. In the intimacy of the moment, I would like to invite you to close your eyes. And for those of us here who want to be a part of this mega event called the resurrection, you can do that by inviting Jesus into your life today. You can pray this very, very simple prayer. Jesus, I need you. I need a hold of my life. Forgive me for my sins. And I want to be a part of this mega event. If you're led to do that, Close your eyes. I'm going to pray this prayer. I'd like to ask you to repeat after me in this prayer. You can mumble it. You can whisper it. You can say it aloud, but say it with conviction because this is between you and the Lord. And he knows your heart. He knows where you are. You want to accept Jesus Christ. This is a time where you can commit your life to Jesus Christ. Jesus, I need you. I really need a hold of my life today. I need you to get a hold of my life today. Forgive me for my sins, for ignoring you in my life. I want to be a part of this mega event. I want to have the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. And I want to invite you into my life today. I want to thank you for dying on the cross for me. If you are a Christian and you are fearful and it has such a hold on you and you're worried, I would like to invite you to pray this prayer and repeat after me. Father, I acknowledge the fear and worry I have about the future. You have said that we need not worry for you will protect and provide for us. Forgive me for allowing fear and worry to overcome me. Today, I rededicate my life to you, to knowing you, to knowing your promises for me, believing that my life is secure in Jesus because I have his resurrection power in me. 
I pray this in Jesus' name. If you prayed this prayer, leave your feedback on the comments of the YouTube or the Facebook post that we are in. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for sending Jesus on the cross to die for us. Thank you that we have a living hope. Thank you that this living hope is only possible because of the resurrection of Christ, born after the love that you have for us. And thank you, Lord, that you loved us before we even learned to love you. And thank you that because of your love, we can move on. Because of your resurrection power in us, we have the assurance that we can live. We can face tomorrow. Because Jesus lives, we live today and forevermore. And may we be anchored on this truth. In Jesus' name, and all God's people say, Amen.